So what I've noticed about many people who have a motor tick, vocal tick, or Tourette's, when I look at the online forums or websites out there or short videos that people share, is that a lot of people feel very powerless to the condition that they have associated themselves with. And rightly so, of course, because if your body is moving by itself and you don't understand it, it's like something must be wrong with me. And thus, then you ask doctors, doctors tell you, you have motor tick. Okay, I am Darren, I have motor tick. And then you create this association between your identity and the condition that you have. And then once you've associated that identity with the condition you have, and that's kind of uh, rolled on for many months or possibly years, you get to the point whereby it's very hard to disassociate your identity with the condition. So the brain works in all sorts of multi-dimensional and faceted ways, right? And one of the tricks I used was to, um, uh, well, that I used was to change my name. Which was very, very odd and very, very weird. And I, I love weirdness because everybody that has a motor tick is a little bit weird and isn't that beautiful. Um, <laughs> and, uh, and yeah, I went from calling myself Darren, which, which is my name, let's be honest, for uh, the entirety of my life, um, to calling myself Daz. And during that period of uh, changing my name and introducing myself as Daz and associating myself with a slightly different identity and becoming somebody else, reinventing who I am, I managed during that same period to shed my motor tick, of which I had for 20 years. Now, I'm not saying it was just because I changed my name, my motor, my motor tick stopped. Of course not. I worked on myself. I did lots of practices and I reprogrammed myself. I understood a lot about the human mind and how to change really deeply ingrained unconscious habits. All of this has helped. And I share with you the comment about the name because it allows you to change. It gives yourself permission to say, oh, I'm going to call myself, you know, this name now from Bob to... Bobby, you know, from Fred to Frederick, from from Sarah to Sarah Lean. I, I don't know, I'm just coming up with random names. But the point is, like, if you start identifying yourself, if you have a motor tick and you've ident identified yourself as having that motor tick or vocal tick or Tourette's for a long period, and like, hello, your name is... Is, is Pauline and I have a Tourette's and that's so associated with who you are, right? By changing your name or just introducing yourself with a slightly different nickname, you're just freeing your mind up to reimagine. To reimagine what this new identity could be, who they could be like, what they could do how they could present themselves to the world. Because your old identity is, is anxious, is tight, is stressed, this body's moving, it's like uh, associated with this identity of having the tick. Whereas if you start just loosening it up by calling yourself by a different name, you're working the identity aspects of your brain in a different way. You're forming a new identity. And bit by bit, it loosens some of the hardwired... Um, sort of neural connections associated with the motor cortex, which is causing your body to move or tighten or tense or do things out of the ordinary or without your conscious control. Because that's essentially all it is. It's just part of your brain or body deciding to do something without you realizing that it wants or needs to do this thing. Um, and thus it brings in the question, who are you anyway? Who are you anyway? Um, but we'll get to that in later videos. I have much to talk about there. Um, but for right now, let's talk about this identity. Seriously, try it. It's a wonderful way to start associating yourself with a different name, a different nickname that you haven't used in a while, maybe, or a new, completely new, no, completely new nickname. With that new nickname, you can start imagining that new person. That new person in your life is like being free and light and confident and uh, alive and really still and have a relaxed body and really fit physically healthy emotionally and mentally balanced and uh, if you associate all of that goodness right with this new nickname this new name that you choose you get to decide right now maybe at the end of this video hell stop why don't we choose that name together now 
What's coming through to you? Like what if I said, what name would you like to have now? What comes up? Trust your intuition. Your intuition is like a guiding force in this life. And this intuition will always tell you the right things. But many of us are very disconnected with our intuition. So unbelievably disconnected with our intuition. It's pretty crazy. Um, another way of describing it is like listening to your heart, listening to intuition, listening to the thing which is like that first initial voice, that impulse, the gut instinct, that the thing. And keep listening to that. You'll get rid of this tick very, very quickly. Um, but we're like constantly people that have a motor tick usually too controlling in their heads. So, right? Which is what I used to be. And I've loosened up a bit. Actually, I've loosened up quite a lot. Um, yeah. <laughs> Um, but that loosening up has genuinely and, and really like uh, helped me on my journey of um, uh, it's been a big part of my journey of healing, you know. So seriously, name. Find a different name. Start identifying yourself with a different name and start start allowing your brain to reprogram who you are a slightly different way. And uh, this has helped me. This is this is one of the tools that has helped me heal my tick of 20 years. And, uh, and uh, I, I, I look forward to sharing more on my channel too. Um, tools to help you heal this motor tick. And uh, I also help clients one-on-one -on -one, um, too, sort of go deeper and find out the, the trauma that started their motor tick, which is often, often very, um, most people are unaware of this, but it does go back to certain points in your childhood or your life where certain things started and then kind of uh, this kind of cycle of, uh, discomfort with reality which is communicated through your body through your tick then snowballs and uh yeah there's just there's there's beautiful way ways there's beautiful ways to heal this motor tick holistically and naturally and although i only had a motor tick right um uh Basically, a motor tick is just half a Tourette's. And so I am, I'm a big believer that it's possible to heal Tourette's naturally if we uh, learn the right uh, process and the right techniques. Um, I also give, give, give ourselves like a little bit of like belief and hope. When you go to a doctor and you say you've got Tourette's, do you think the doctors give you any belief or hope? Hell no. They say, like, take these drugs. They'll numb you to the world and give you these side effects. Right? <clears throat> like the doctors don't have answers and so that's why I took this into my hands to fix this thing in myself and which I've done and I look forward to and I am and I want to share this as much as I can with others too because supposedly there are uh, millions of people tens of millions of people across this world that have some sort of motor tic or and or Tourette's vocal tics nervous twitches things like this so that's it name seriously what is that new name? How are you going to associate yourself uh, with that new name in this new light? This new light and loving and balanced body. And I wish you the best on that little technique. And, uh, and check out my other videos. And uh, I wish you the best. Have a wonderful, wonderful day. I'm sending you love from Kopanyan. Peace.